Hey guys, Ayanashi here, and uh, today is the day before Thanksgiving, and I am starting to prepare my turkey. I am going to be spatchcocking it, and uh, you know, a lot of people ask me how I do my turkey, and um, you know, I spatchcock it, brine it, and then uh, smoke it. So I'm just going to go through the process. If you are uneasy about uh, mutilating turkeys, uh, it's not a video for you. So let's begin. First thing you do, open up the turkey. This is a, I don't go for the biggest turkeys because honestly they just take forever and they're not worth it. Uh, this is a 16 and a half pound bird, which is actually a pretty big bird. I try to get to about 12 pounds most, but uh, yeah. So first thing we need to do is open it up. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're just gonna drain it. And then we're gonna rinse it off in cold water. All right. Let's let this fill up for a moment. And I need to get, okay, so I do have a pot and I am gonna be making turkey stock. So I decided to get this ready. So when we start taking parts out of this, we we'll throw it in the pot. I'll show you how I make my turkey stock. I use that for Stuffing, it's great for stuffing and gravy. All right, so turkey. Getting all rinsed off, make sure it's well defrosted first. All right, shake turkey. Down the cutting board. All right, get all the turkey neck. Toss in the pot. Uh, turkey neck's usually under the flap up here with the gizzards and all that fun stuff. And toss that in. All right, where's the neck? The bird don't have a neck? All right, I guess that little nub was the neck. All right, so basically spatchcocking is cut off the spine of the turkey. Uh, get yourself a good pair of poultry shears. Um, yeah, this is this is usually a little bit hard to do, but you just cut along along the spine, and then back on the other side. Right on the you cut the rib bones. Careful because the rib bones where you're cutting. It gets pretty sharp in there. You know, these uh, shears are usually a little bit easier on smaller birds. All right, so we just go back on this side. So the reason I have this knife out is you do have to cut through basically the hip of the bird. All right, now we'll go back the other way. All right, that's that hip bone. And then we just flip it back over here. Go back on this side, all the way down. Just need to get that. Basically, you got the spine of the turkey, and you have the what's left of the turkey here. So, spine of the turkey, toss to your pot. All right. Rinse off my hands. I'm gonna put my tools in here. 
and this board is filled with a bunch of juice so let's go ahead and rinse off the board I don't want it going everywhere and rinse off inside the turkey all right. all right next part of this is you notice that these legs are just pretty much free there's nothing really holding them there except for some skin and a little bit of muscle so the whole point of spatchcocking the turkey is when you smoke it you want to lay it down flat as possible the less surface area the, the easy the that uh that there is the the uh, more even the smoke is when you smoke your turkey so we have to break the inside of the rib cage together uh, part so usually how you do this is you could either force it straight down to spread it apart or you flip it upside down and you could just take your knife and your turkey will lay flat so there's the turkey and that is the process of spatchcocking it all right what we're going to do now is i do a brine with my i brine my turkey basically soak it in a bunch of herbs and seasonings and uh it gets just it just gets right into that, that breast meat and, and the, the turkey and it just makes it very flavorful okay so a little paring knife you don't want to cut too much on this thing but you just want to break just start that break between the skin and the breast and then get your hand in there because you want to get the 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 the, the uh the, the brine to get inside on both sides of this this breast so do that on both sides Yeah, you know, we got the little chicken thermometer, the turkey thermometer, classic thing for the oven. Don't need that. We'll be smoking and then using real thermometer. All right, and then you could do the same thing for the leg on the thighs. Go. All right, that's done. Now I got a. Game, bird, and poultry uh, brine from Cabela's. This uh, this mostly has, let's see, what does it sh say it has in here? That's what that looks like. Got a couple pouches. And uh, let's see. All right, so that is spatchcock in the turkey. Uh, not much to it, you know, it's just basically removing the spine. Uh, so I am going to show you how I make my uh, turkey stock for gravy and stuffing. So uh, let me go ahead and just, let me just clean off my work surface and get some vegetables out and I'll be right back. Right, so turkey is in the refrigerator, spatchcocked and it's brining right now. And time to make the turkey stock out of the spine and the other extra parts, neck, whatever, gives a good flavor for the turkey stock. And uh, what I put in turkey stock is I have parsley, got some carrots, celery. This gives a kind of good hearty flavor to it. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and uh, just kind of clean up the carrots and everything. I sanitized my whole workspace and uh, Cut off the ends of the carrots. This turkey stock, so we're not gonna use, like when we're done with this, we're not gonna use, we're gonna drain it, filter out all the, you know, food particles. So, you know, we don't have to be too precise with our, you know, our cutting. I just don't like leaving the, you know, the, the, uh, the tops of the um, carrots. 
don't have to be very precise. I just want to make sure that I get everything. I'll rinse off the carrots also. I just, um, because sometimes you do get a bad spot on the carrot. So let me know what you guys do with, uh, you know, do you make your own turkey stock for it? Uh, I also use, I make a gravy just with the turkey uh, drippings, which is going to be a very smoky and hearty flavor. Uh, it is actually really good. Um, everyone loves when I make my, when I do a brisket and I take that, the brisket drippings and make it into a nice uh, gravy. All right, so got the carrots. Uh, like I said, we don't have to be very pretty with these. We're just gonna cut them all in half and dump them in the pot. Celery. Just gonna take some of these off. I usually do about four stalks. And I will also grab, if you got the celery leaves in here, I'm gonna grab all these celery leaves. And I will be throwing those in there. There's a lot of flavor, you know, they're not very good for just eating, but uh, there's a lot of flavor in those leaves. A lot more flavor than just regular celery. So, uh, I actually got more than just three. Just rinse these off. You know, more than four, I got five pieces here. Again, I'll just cut them in half just to, you know, make it more easy. You could stir these. These will just pretty much disintegrate by the time I get done. Uh, just a handful of garlic and then the flat of the knife, just kind of smash them. Get that, those oils out and then dump them in there. I mean, not celery. Uh, this is parsley, Italian parsley. So we'll just rinse this off. You got your parsley. I'm going to just, oh, stems all. Dump that in there. All right, now for the seasonings. The nice amount of salt. Okay. A lot of pepper. Well, not a lot, but just a generous amount of pepper. Nothing like a pepper grinder. I use uh, thyme. Generous amount of thyme in there. Now, don't I don't overdo the bay leaves, but I will put couple bay leaves inside of there. That Those bay leaves are just really great. Uh, some great flavor. A little bit of oregano. Uh, I'm weird like that. I'm kind of, I'm Italian, part Italian, so I like my oregano. Put that in there and then you get a mess that looks like this. Yum. So, You'll be filling this up with water numerous times. You're going to, have to keep checking on it. Uh, I usually boil this down for about six to eight hours. Just depends on how it looks, uh, the color of it. Uh, I'll give you an update through through it, but you know you do want to have enough uh, stock in there to you know at least a couple couple gallons. I will bring it to a boil and then I'll put it to a medium heat and just to let it just cook away for. You know, all day. Yeah, so while, while it's filling up, so this, my kitchen is, you know, it's, a, it's a fairly open right here. We plan on redoing, you know, getting rid of all the countertops, all these uh, cabinets, replace everything, put a big massive island in the middle, which will actually help with, uh, you know, more of the cooking things I'm gonna be doing. I wanna do more cooking shows before this one, but my problem is I, is I never have my kitchen done yet. Like this kitchen was pretty bad here. Who removes? The panel puts chicken wire in. Yeah. All right. Now the pot is nice and full. You can't see it. It's off camera, but it's over there. So 
that is my turkey stock. And uh, so what else I'm gonna be doing is, I do have my, I said before I'll do another video uh, a little bit later today. And I'm gonna show you how I do my, got my brisket, flat, got some brats, gonna decase the brats and you know put some seasoning in there. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you like these, uh, let me know. If you have suggestions on things you want me to try cooking, uh, I am gonna be making a video about uh, my jerky. I'm gonna be making uh, Radical Reggie a big batch of jerky, and I'm gonna film going through the whole process, and uh, yeah, you know, I, I make some pretty good jerky, and love it, so. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe, like, comment, let me know. Anything, whatever's on your mind. I'll talk to you guys later, though. Peace.